Here's the temperature outside right now. It is 24 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is part of the reason why I'm not outside filming this right now. The other reason is it's very windy and be very hard to talk over all the noise. Uh, but anyways, we're at the beginning of a seven day stretch here where it's gonna get very cold. Uh, it's gonna get down into the low teens and single digits Fahrenheit again uh, for the next seven days. So right now you can see the pond is just starting to freeze over. Uh, it's only been below freezing for less than 12 hours, so it hasn't really had a chance to do much freezing. But this is the middle of January. Um, it, it, usually here in Northeast Ohio, it's um, usually the middle of January is always the coldest, or at least we get a cold snap for a brief time. After the seven day period, it's gonna go back up in temperature above freezing. So this might be the only opportunity to see just how the pond freezes over with the aerator in there and how thick the ice might actually get. Um, I'm really curious to know in that little intake bay area where the five gallon bucket is below the ground level where the pump sits. I'm curious to know um, how deep the ice will actually get into there. I don't think it's going to be cold enough for long enough to even get a foot of ice on the pond, which would basically mean that there won't be any uh, solid ice uh, anywhere in that area where the pump would sit in the intake bay below the ground. So I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna test the water temperature at the surface and at the lowest part of the pond. Uh, and then I'm also going to, I won't do this on video, but I'm also going to explain this here real quick. I'm gonna take a piece of PVC and put it down into the intake bay, into the bottom of the bucket that's in there where the pump would normally sit, the pump sitting right there on top of the ground right now. I'm gonna put it down in there and I'm gonna have a little flange on the bottom of it so that when it does freeze over, I can pull up on it. The ice shouldn't stick to it too much. It should break free pretty easy. I'll pull up on it until it stops and that'll give me the depth of the ice of how far it's freezing down into the bucket. So I know how far the ice actually freezes solid. Um, if it actually goes into the bucket, which is only, I believe, six inches below the surface is where it starts and then it's a five gallon bucket, so the depth of that, whatever that is. So I'll be able to know how far it actually freezes down into there when I pull up on the stick and I can just measure the difference. The orange cone right there, that's a funnel and that is attached to the air pump that's hanging there with just a piece of tubing. Hopefully this works by putting that uh, cone on the bottom so that it helps prevent any uh, snowflakes from getting up inside the intake. Now there's other ways I can do this. this. I just did this temporarily for this season since this is the first season. I wanna see how the aerator works. Um, see if it prevents the pond from freezing over completely. It just needs to have the, at least have a hole there uh, where the air bubbles are coming up. So the plan is for the future to possibly actually just keep that aerator inside the house and then just run an air tube from inside the house to outside. So this is a temporary thing just to see how it works and then I'll actually do a permanent solution maybe next season. So let's go outside now and test the water temperature of the pond. All right, here is the surface temperature of the water. It is uh, 38 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface, and it is 24 degrees Fahrenheit outside ambient temperature. Let's go ahead and lower this down to the bottom. You can watch it rise, or at least it should. All right, so that is the bottom there. It's 44. Yeah, 44, degree, 44, 45 degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom there. All right, I got my little uh, PVC stick going down to the bottom of that bucket that's right down there. You can see the top of it. All right, it is the next morning here, and it is seven degrees Fahrenheit. Very cold, still very windy. Here is the pond. It is mostly frozen over, except for the little ring there where the air bubbles are coming up. You can see the wind here, there you go. <laughs> there's the gusts and there's the bamboo back there. It's now the next day or the second day, I guess. And it is currently morning hours. It is nine degrees Fahrenheit and it did get down to two degrees Fahrenheit overnight. Here is currently what it looks like. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Uh, so I had to move the aerator over a little bit. You can see the puddle is there now, or not the puddle, the the hole in the ice. It was over here slightly before, and I, I didn't really realize it, but I guess I think the wind that we had recently may have, uh, before it was frozen, it may actually have pulled it that way. Um, 
and it pulled the aerator up higher. So there's two ledges in there before it goes down to the deepest part. And it was up on the first ledge, which is only about six inches below the surface, and that was that was not where it needed to be. Uh, so I had to move it down to the second ledge, which is where it's sitting now, and the aerator is sitting on the second ledge at about 18 inches below the surface, which is about halfway in depth, which is where it needs to be. You don't want it all the way at the bottom because you don't want the uh, the water from the bottom go, you know, being pulled all the way up to the surface and causing a cycle where the colder water goes down to the bottom. Uh, so you want the uh, bottom of the pond to be the warmer area where the fish just sit. So it's sitting about halfway up in depth, so it still has another 18 inches below that of water that's not being aerated, not being pulled up from the bottom. Um, so it, actually around here in Northeast Ohio, I believe the freeze line is considered to be 18 inches below the ground. So if you were to like dig a trench for a water line, you want it to be 18 inches or, or, or deeper, I guess, if you wanted it to be, it doesn't have to be. So the water in the pond is gonna follow the same kind of principle. And the reason is because in this pond here, it's only about three feet in the center uh, max depth. But the rest of it to where it might be hitting that 18 inch mark in depth, it's very close to the, well, it's actually right at the ground level at that depth at 18 inches. So the ground itself is not going to allow the ice to freeze. Now, if it was a lot deeper, um, let's say this pond was the same size, but it was 10 feet deep. Well, it could very well freeze. It could, if, if it was cold enough, it could freeze two feet in depth, have a, you know, have a two foot thick ice layer on top of it because the bottom, you know, the ground is so far down below that it's not getting much uh, heating, I guess, from the ground. It's, it's not really heating. If, I mean, we're, we're talking like 40, 50 degree temperature series. I wouldn't consider it warm, but it's, you know, heat energy. And uh, because this pond is not that deep, it's only three feet in the center. Uh, it's only really probably going to freeze to maybe a foot thick, I would think, because when it gets down to towards, if it got down to 18, it's getting really close to the edge around here. Uh, where it's basically up against the ground below there. I, I don't think the ground would allow it to freeze that thick. Um, and certainly not down to three feet. There, there's no way it would ever freeze that deep. But anyways, yeah, so it's it's there. It's starting to look, It's it, from this angle, you can't really tell, but it's starting to look like a pimple or a volcano kind of. It's actually building up ice around there. I'll probably show that maybe later in the week as it gets a little bit thicker. And of course, the birds like the liquid water hole as well, even though it's freezing cold. These are doves. There's been a a flock, I guess, of doves hanging around the, the pond area during the summertime. This is probably the same ones. Uh, although they typically like to hang out up in that area. They like to lay down in the mulch and then take a drink out of the uh, the stream that flows there in the summer. All right, we're on day three, I guess, or 15 degrees now, and it's about midday, and then the temperature last night got down to 10 degrees. Here is the pond this morning. Um, it got a little bit of a dusting last night with snow, just a tiny bit of snow, not very much. It's probably like a half inch. And you can see the woodpeckers, these are the downy woodpeckers, are enjoying their feed. Uh, there is a titmouse over there, um, in, right in there. Uh, there's chickadees that come up there, purple finches, all kinds of birds that come up to there. Uh, and then uh, goldfinches that go to that feeder right there. Anyways, not about the birds, but uh, you can see they're down there as well. The squirrels, there's, there was four squirrels out there earlier and they're going over to their, their feeder, which is right there. Um, there's, well, there's another squirrel. See, they, <laughs> territorial. So they, uh, they're going after the nuts that I had pulled out of the feeder, some older nuts, and I put them on the ground there to put fresh nuts in the feeder. Um, and then I dumped this feeder out and dumped it down there. So there's animal tracks all over here because they've been going after those nuts that were on the ground. But you can also see over there, that they're also liking the watering hole. And you can see all the footprints going right over to the watering hole where there's some fresh water that they can get a drink from. So that's what it looks like right now. Uh, it doesn't look quite like the pimple it did before because the snow is covering up the ice. You're not really getting a chance to see kind of the volcano look to it. Um, I'll be testing the thickness of the ice later in the week here. Oh, there's a squirrel getting a drink. Trying to get this 
cheap sewer camera here. You know, the image quality won't be all that great. I just got it basically taped to the end of this stick here. And I'll just kind of put it under the ice and we'll see what it looks like. You can clearly see here that the ice is really not all that thick, especially up in the, uh, even the shallow areas where it's only a few inches deep, it's not even frozen all the way down to the ground. And of course you can see the fish here in the fish cave, that's where they're hanging out, that's where I expected them to be since it's warmer down there near the bottom. Uh, lots of algae obviously, it's obviously haven't been able to get rid of that, but everything else here looks pretty much as I expected. I would not want to walk in this ice yet, it's definitely not thick enough, at least not to stand on for more than a second. We're at day four. It is currently 14 degrees about midday, and it got down to two degrees last night. Again, this is Fahrenheit. Here's what it looks like outside. I don't think we got any snow whatsoever. Uh, I think we're supposed to get some snow today, so we'll take a look at that tomorrow maybe, but you can see the squirrels are out there enjoying their nuts. Uh, there's one over here, there's another one. And of course you can see all the animal tracks leading right into wa the uh, watering hole there. But what's interesting is, I don't know if it's showing up on camera very well. Let me just brighten it up a little bit. There we go. So you can see that there is ice forming where the air bubbles are. And I don't know if this was from like a collapse around the ring because that has happened before and then those are just little floaters in there and maybe they'll go away. Uh, or if this is actually maybe going to ice over, it depends. All right, we're a few hours later, and it's, I guess, what I expected here. It is starting to freeze over, but in a very weird way. Um, this ice here, it's really, really thin. It's just, it's basically just like a bubble. It's not even solid. It's just a, it's an arch bubble right here. Hard to tell in the video. Um, this will either continue to grow or it may, might melt and fall off. So I think what I'm actually going to do is, because it is supposed to be cold still for a little while, or this cold anyways, um, I'm just going to increase the aeration a little bit and, and see what that does. All right, I have adjusted the valves so that it's adjusted just enough to where the upflow of water is actually now completely uh, encapsulating the bottom of this bubble so the upflow of the water is completely filling this ice bubble here. Um, so I think that should help melt it from the warmer water down below. Okay, it's day five, 25 degrees currently, midday. It got down to only 19 last night. And you can see here that the hole is completely ice capped. I'll go out there and take a closer look at it. Now, it's probably not completely sealed over with ice. It's probably just got uh, an air gap between the water and the ice itself because of the way the air bubbles work. Uh, and there's probably cracks in there so the air can actually get out. So it's not completely sealed per se, but it's not really an opening anymore. Yep, it's pretty much just what I thought here. It's just a real thin layer of ice. And then you can see the, uh, there's a gap there and there's water moving underneath there. So it's not, it's not thick at all. It's just a thin layer on top. But we're supposed to get some snow later today and all through tomorrow. Uh, somewhere between five and nine inches, possibly. So I'm not gonna let that get covered up. I'm just gonna bust this ice out of here. Oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> so the ice floated underneath that way and it actually looks really thin over here. I guess actually what I expected, it's probably like a, a slanted bowl shape around this whole area. Yep, oh, yep, whole thing fell off real easy. I don't know how exactly how thick the ice is, but you can see I've already walked on it here. It seems pretty solid enough here. I don't want to go too close to that hole because I know it's thinner over there, but it's definitely solid. I'll be checking the thickness of the whole thing later on, as I said. But here's the tube. Now, if I pull up on the tube here, which is down in the bucket for the, where the filter pump goes, or not filter, but pump, and that's about how tall it is. So it's, 
it's a little bit less than the uh, five gallon bucket height. I would say that'd be like a three gallon bucket height. I don't know what that is, but it looks like to be about 13, 14 inches. So I'd say the ice is fairly thick over here. I think we're on uh, day six here and you can see we got a lot of snow. Uh, we got about 10 inches of snow and you can see the hole there is still open. Yep. And just for reference, this is the current temperature, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the end of the day, uh, but it was 20 degrees since midnight and only got up to 25. So that's been the temperature for the entire day. All right, it is now day seven in mid morning and we're at 12 degrees Fahrenheit and it got down to 10 last night. And here's what the pond looks like and you can clearly see here there is still a hole there with liquid water bubbling around in there. We're at day eight and it is currently 25 degrees and it was down to 16 degrees around after midnight which was about 12 hours ago. Here is what it looks like. The hole is still there with liquid water in there and the snow is still very deep. Let's have a closer look. It's so bright out here I can barely even see my screen at all. But you can see there, there is liquid water in there. There's no ice on top of it or anything. It's now day nine and it is currently 24 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning. And from midnight until now it was 14 degrees. And here is the pond. You can clearly see there is still a hole in the ice there where the air bubbler is. And you can see that it is still not frozen over. You can see the water bubbling in there. But this is the last day I will be doing these daily updates here because um, from today going forward over the next week, it's gonna be in the, uh, in the 40s and even up in the 50s. Uh, and then it's gonna taper off back down into the high 30s going uh, forward after that into the next weeks. And we're even gonna be getting some rain, although I'm not really sure how much. So a lot of this is gonna melt, and this is as thick as the ice is gonna get. So I'm gonna go out there uh, today here. We're gonna cut some holes in the ice, measure its thickness. Uh, we're gonna take the water's temperature, and we're gonna take a look at the fish in there as well. All right, I'm over here by the waterfall area and this little um, cove is the area that is not disturbed by the aeration at all because I'm over here in this little area and the aerator is way over there, which over here is very divided. So the only thing that would be keeping this from freezing all the way to the ground is the ground itself. So I just drilled a hole right here and I'll show you how thick the ice is. All right, so right there, I am now hooked onto the bottom of the ice, and we are about three and a half inches. So, three and a half inches is as thick as it ever got with those cold, cold temperatures for, um, for nine days. And all the way to the bottom, over here, this would be the deepest part of this area. So that's the bottom there, is about 11, 11 and a half, and a half inches. So I think it's probably safe to say that the ground itself had something to do with it. Because if you just had a bucket of water sitting out in the open, uh, it would probably be thicker than three inches of ice if it was just sitting on top of the ground. Right now we are over here, which is basically near the middle of the pond, the deepest part, uh, and the cave is about over there. And this is where the aerator was sitting, which is about 18 inches down there. So over this area it is going down to three feet. And I feel like this was actually thinner. Okay, so now I'm hooked to the bottom of the ice there. And we're at a, just a little under three inches. So the ice is actually a little bit thinner over here than it was in the cove. And I believe it had something to do with this aerator with the upflow of water, uh, keeping the underside of this ice from freezing too thick. So if there was gonna be any chance of there being thicker ice, it would be over here in the deeper part. But since the aerator's over here, that's prevented that. I don't know if you could see that, but you can see the fish down there through the hole. So I've got my thermometer there with a remote temperature probe, and that's going down in the hole all the way to the bottom of the pond. 
and the current temperature near the bottom uh, it's been sitting there and it's been stabilized here at 34 degrees Fahrenheit. I know you might be thinking, oh, that's really close to 32, so it could freeze at any moment. Any moment, But it doesn't really work that way. Um, it is, it's never going to freeze down at three feet deep. The ground simply just won't allow it. The, there's so much thermal mass in the ground. It would have to be uh, well below free, freezing temperatures probably for months before it even comes close to freezing all the way to the bottom. Now I have moved the temperature probe up near the surface. We're sitting at about three inches below the surface of the water. And you can see here, as expected, the temperature up near the surface is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes sense because the ice is around three inches thick. You can already see here, since I turned the aerator off, that the surface of this is already starting to freeze over. And it's only been maybe 30 minutes since I turned it off. Little ice crystals. Well, there you have it. The aerator does exactly what it needs to do, and the ice didn't even freeze past three inches thick in these past nine days where it's been very, very cold. So if it didn't happen this week, in the middle of January, uh, there probably will be never any kind of concern of the pond freezing completely solid on any winter that we're ever gonna have in Northeast Ohio. It's just never gonna happen. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.